Hey guys, just got a quick zoom here. This is three of us. Me, Matt, B. If anyone else joins in, we'll look at it. I'm gonna do a quick thing on the iron fly. I'll share my screen real quick on that. And a few of the things I was thinking about. I'm not on anything super official on these yet, but all right, let's look at the difference between XSP and SPX. Try to say that five times fast. Um so XSP is the mini index for the XPX. I forgot the exact ratio. Matt, do you happen to know the, the ratio of it? Like how much one share of XPS is worth compared to XXP? I would say it's, I would assume it's probably the same as, um, as SPY is. It's yeah, just a 1256 contract. Yeah, that, that's the big deal about it. <clears throat> One of the main issues is the volume and open interest is much lower. So if you go like one DTE, I mean, we're at market close, you're not gonna notice too much. But if you look at the open interest, at least, we got very little, you know, not even a thousand here. And so you go a little bit out of the money or at three, 4,000, the volumes are not high on these. So your fills are gonna be a bit off in a lot of cases. I mean, you could even see the ranges, like 2 to 30. You could even notice it after hours. So you do SPX, you won't have that range either. It's going to be a little bit lower, 45, 75, say. So SPX, you can get in and out $5 increments all day. XXP, it's going to be a wider range in most strikes. And then if you're going to do an iron fly on it with four different contracts, there's going to be quite a bit of variability there between what the mid price is and what the natural price is. So one of the best ways to go about that, and let me go over how to do the iron fly for those of you that are still a little confused on it, because it is a little bit tricky to set up. And you can actually set them up a few different ways. <clears throat> the way I think about it is I want to sell at the money, call and put, We'll go closer to the 413 instead of 412 because we're at 412.98. And there. All right, so sell the 413, call and put. And then we'll look at the expected move, 1.7 for tomorrow's expiration. Let's go a little bit beyond it in most cases. You can also go near one standard deviation if you'd like. With XXP at $1 increments, you can go to the 0.21 delta or 0.12 delta, very big range there. There's nothing in between it. There's no like 409.75, 409.5, right? So I would probably go with the 409. 409, 410 is not going to make much of a difference either way, I think. So you're going to buy the 409 or 408 or 409. This would be a Four with just subtract these two numbers. Three four thirteen plus four. You're gonna to go to four seventeen and buy the ask. It's gonna say iron condor, but it's really an iron fly. What you want to do here is look at the analyze trade tab. I think that's the only it does have other stuff involved in it. Analyze. It's gonna look weird right now, maybe. Maybe because the, is the commission is the same as like what um, SPX would be, or is it the same as I'm not SPA? sure actually. It's a good question. I don't know everything in life. It might be the same. Let's see if Google says it by any chance. Mm -hmm. SPX. 51. They don't have it on here. That's probably one we should call TD Martin Trade on and see what it is. Because if it's identical, I'm leaning more towards not doing them. In this case, I'll look on the app real fast while you're doing that. In this case, if it's a four width, you might get it. It says 1.93. You might get it for like 1.5, 1.6, possibly. So you're possibly use, losing about $20, $30 to get filled on it as well. And that's the bigger difference in the commissions possibly when you look at it as, as a percent of the actual premiums. 
So if you do it with XPX one day out, I would sell it to 41.30 at this point. Sell the put, sell the call, take the bids. Expect to move 25.9. So I, I think I went 20. I don't remember the time I had. If I went 25 or 30. Um, did anyone take the trade from today for the iron fly? I think it might have been 25. I did not. 30 plus 25, 55. We'll look at the analyzed time on both. But here you can see natural 6.2, mid 6.5, much less of a spread there. Gonna remove this. Right click analyze. Why is it doing that? That's weird. Yeah, it should be a straight line like that. That's something the wrong expression did. You don't have anything checked right now, do you? Why do I have 508? That's weird. Yeah, I mean, I can't do that. I do have a trade on, but I want to. I mean, down theory. below, you should have one of those boxes checked. There you go. Yeah, there we go. I was just on the wrong expiration date. Oh, okay. All right. So here you see the curve, right? A little triangle. The max loss is a little bit scary to look at compared to the small amount of a possible return. However, just remember the expected move is fairly common and it reaches it at least 68% of the time in the long term. So the odds are still in our favor that we're going to get some sort of profit here. One of the main things to do is to do a further out expiration and then look at that purple line as it moves. I'm thinking for these trades, the seven or 14 days is a possibility here. If implied volatility does not move, I think it might be more beneficial to go a little bit further out in expiration. So here you go, 105. It's going to be pretty expensive to go 105. Are you looking at a few thousand dollars probably to actually place a trade here? But let's see. I'm just curious. 4125 to 41. 15, about 100, slightly under the expected move, but just curious what it looks like. A quick a little bit of skew there. So now what you do is you click on this and look at the expiration date. Imagine this being about every 30 minutes to an hour in our one BTE. And then this purple line is showing what the possible outcomes could be. Now, obviously, if we're doing a 1 DTE, we should start a few days ahead already because of the overnight session. So if you have a pretty dramatic move in the overnight session, you could be at the negative like we were a few days this week, right? Mm -hmm. But then in the mornings, it did recover back pretty much every day. And then it's starting to lean towards the expected move some part later in that day. So then you can imagine being near the middle of these purple curves again. And that's why at certain times of the day, they were profitable, right? This would be right at expiration. So we're looking around here is market open. It might be 10.30, 12 o'clock, 1, 2, then we're there, right? So if you're doing each day like that, then you obviously have more time to deal with the trade, 14 days like that. It's almost like a day is like an hour when you consider 1DTE and you know the hours that we're working on it. If implied volatility is not bad, I think it's a better outcome. I'm going to look at some back testing on it. So maybe weekly or even two weeks out. But that's not to say that the 1DTE won't work. I think it might work. It's just hard to look at backtesting on 1DTE because there's so much movement that can happen from day to day. And you're going to have a lot of variability. Any questions on what I talked about there? Do you, do you think you're going to be... 
personally trading the uh, SPX or the small one, the XSP? Well, what's interesting about this, if you go 714 days out, XSP could make more sense. And one of the main reasons why is I don't necessarily like the XSP 1DT because you're talking $30, $40. Like it's not really doing much difference in the end. And I'm not going to do multiple contracts of it because then the commissions are just ridiculous. But I'm a little uncomfortable doing the XPXs for $1,000 on it. Because the swings can be pretty high, as you can notice. Let's look at 14 days out, though. We go 10 away. 413 by the 403 423. See, here you're getting a credit of 685. And the max loss, I think, is 1,000 because the width. That's not necessarily as bad. Lance, I'm, I may have missed it, but wh why did you go 20 points on each side when it said 10? No, here I went 10, right? Because uh, the at the money is 413. Yeah, but you're expected 10 and then added 10. Expected move is 10 for XSP. Yeah, no, I, but you're you're shorting the, I mean, you're, yeah, you're shorting the 403s, right? Yeah. Oh, no, I'm no, sorry. No, you're, no, you're shorting the 413. No, no. Yeah, my bad. Got it. 10 and 10. Yeah. So you analyze this one. Let me go back on the dates. Boop. I mean, the credit of six hundred dollars might be worth doing for one contract here. You know, six fifty or so, and then you're getting sorry, you're going to get the very similar pattern that you saw before. And what did you say the width was? This was a ten width. Because, so really, your max loss is four hundred bucks, roughly. Yes, because it's one thousand minus it. Not even, maybe three hundred. Yeah, well, I mean that—that's pretty good. Yeah, I like the amounts there for the possible rich profit and possible max losses. If you did this with XPX, it's going to be really expensive because you have to go a hundred with. Yep. Buying power effect, 300 bucks. Yeah, I'm going to look more into this tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a bit risky, obviously, but in this low volatility, uh, you know, give it a few days. Mm -hmm. If you can stay in it, you know, the decay, it can decay, decay 100 bucks pretty easy. Yep. I was talking to a big country um, Discord. He does this one a lot, pretty similar to what I just showed. XSP, I think he's doing it for his daughter's account. So a little bit smaller account. And he gets out a 10% profit. So he's not looking for much here. So I he's selling he's it for 60 a, and or 600 and closing for $60 profit. Around there, yeah. So if you, let's say you sold it for around 680 or so, he would get out about 600 or so. Make 60 bucks or so with the commissions. Yeah, you just um, set your GTC and... Yeah, exactly. You GTC it, 10% profit and wait. And he does it with a debit at first. I think the way he does it is he sells two of the puts at the money. And then he's buying... That's I checked. I think he buys around a 0.2 delta which is a 10 width anyway. And then he actually buys in the money put about 10 width. He usually goes around 0.80, he said. But if you look at 10 away, 412. I went to do 413 there. Let's see. 413, four of, sell two of them. That's like selling them at the money call and at the money put. Buy the four three, buy the four twenty three. About yeah, he does it this way. So you enter as a debit, and that's your max loss. You can't lose more than it because it's a debit at first. And then he'll do a good sell canceled 
about 3.4, 3.5 or so. And he's back tested it. He said it's about a 90% win rate on that. If you're not greedy and you're just looking for a really small gain on it. Which is interesting. You lost me a little bit. What, what's he doing? And I, I, I'm I, not seeing it on the screen. All right, did you pull it off? It's right here. Sorry, my screen must be. Here we go. I'm sorry. Okay. So he just stays on the put side. You can do it on the call side too. I don't think it matters. He sells two of the at the monies. Okay. Normally we sell a put, sell a call. He's yep. just selling two of the puts. So it's just a butterfly. It's not a. Yeah. Yeah. Then he buys uh, about 0.2 delta, buys about a 0.8 delta, he said. And then sometimes there is a little bit of skew there where he wants to make sure the widths are the same. Okay. In this case, it's a little bit off because it's 0.9. And the other side was 0.23. So the 0.23 is pretty close, but the 0.9 is a little off. So he sometimes fiddles around with the strike a little bit to get to that. And I think he does it on his own account with XPX, though. But I'll double check on that. I think the What's it look like on the analyze tab? It's the same. Yeah, pretty much. It's just 10 times, right? So if you're willing to do it for about a $3,000 debit, get out at 3300 or so, you make 300 bucks. Pretty much multiply everything by 10 here. But yeah, 10% profit, not greedy about it. If you go with that really short profit, he was saying it's a 90% win rate. Because um, the main reason is we're starting at the top here. It's pretty unlikely you're going to have dramatic moves in a day that's going to go to here. I mean, you need a few percent there. We're going to 407 or so as you break even. That's pretty. That's a pretty big jump from 413 to 407. Yeah, that's all. That's like one and a half percent move in a day. Very unlikely to happen. That doesn't mean it can't, but unlikely. So if we look at the days here, or this is today, you could show a loss if you're have a little movement in after hours, but nothing dramatic. You're down 20 bucks here with a um, little over half a percent move. If the futures open like 1% up or 1% down, we're looking at a $50 loss, not dramatic. But watch this purple line each day. 21, 22, three, four days. He said it's a sweet spot. So in a 14 DTE, around three to four days, many times he gets at least a 10% profit right here. He's not waiting until he gets here. Hmm. And then he'll do that over and over. So if you could get 10% on your money in three, four days and get a 90% win rate, that's something I definitely want to look more into. Those are really good numbers. Does that make Did sense? Did you what... Uh why he would choose the put versus the call? No, I'll ask him. I don't think it matters. No. If you do the call side, it should look very similar. All these look similar. I didn't know if uh, the Vic or something else was or the, the opening of the market or whatever was determining right. which side. Maybe. Maybe. I'm not sure if he times it out like that or not. What, was the, what were the deltas again that he did? 0. 0.2 and 0. 0.8. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. You're, you're... Two contracts right in the money, slightly in the money. You're buying a deep in the money, but so it essentially is. Let me think about it because these get confusing. I'm just gonna put it here. So one. Um. So here you're at the money, but selling it. Selling two. You got two. Bigger to see it. And then you go turn away. Buy one around 0.2 delta. 
Uh, or ten dollars wide. Yeah. Or but it depends on the current well I'm expected move though. So I'm not sure if he I think he just keeps out the point two delta no matter what that is. So oh, it might be okay. a little different, but not dramatic. And then right here he buys one. Round point eight delta. So if you're looking at these prices here, stock price could go up, down, or sideways. There's no other thing they could do. If you look at it, it's going to be almost like a cone. Oh, I misclicked by mistake. So it's going to be like a cone shape almost and where the possible prices are each day. Because the expected move in the first day will be just a small amount here. But let's say you had a big up day. The expected move could still go up another chunk, right? So you're going to have this cone shape possible expected move when you get to the 14 days, which looks eerily similar to the actual risk return graph in the analyze tab, right? Mm -hmm. But um, as you're doing that, you don't want to you don't want to wait until it gets to the end. You probably just get out in a few days. Um, what if the trade goes against you? I did ask him that, and he said it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> But if you're selling a put here and buying a put here, you're taking in more money when you sold this put. I'm sorry, let's look at the downside first. It makes more sense. You sell a put here, you buy a put here. That would be a credit, right? Because we're taking in more money on the at the money put and we're buying it for cheaper here, right? Out of the money, yeah. This side is a credit spread if I only counted one of these two puts, right? Yeah, it's a debit spread and a credit spread. Yeah, right here it's a debit spread because this yeah. one's going to cost more than you sold it at. So let's say the stock jumps here right away. In this case, what side would be more profitable? This side or this side? That one, the top. Yeah, the so I think he possibly would close it. He'd close one of these and close one of these for a profit. And he might, I think he said he'd probably still wait because there's still a very good chance that we might hover around here a few more days. And then maybe you just get out of this side at break even and still possibly get your 10% that way. And then it's the other way around. What if it shoots up? Which one would we want to get rid of? Probably this, right? Well, that, that would be the profitable one. Right. So you get rid of the profitable one. You wait a bit on the unprofitable one. This would show a little loss compared to when you entered it. But there's a good chance there's mean reversion and it might go somewhere in this cone and not necessarily close there. So that's one way to consider it. But I'll have to think about like actual numbers of when you might want to get out of it. Maybe if it hits like half the expected move, like right away. It was like a 10-point expected move in the 14 days. So if it moves, say, five in the three or four days, if you didn't close it yet, maybe then you'd close one side and wait. I don't want to make these super complicated where you could re-enter another leg and do all this other stuff. I mean, there are possible strategies for it, but I don't want to make them super complicated here. That's really all I got. What other questions do you guys have on this or anything? I, I, if I can just jump in for a second, yeah. when we're doing the zero DT or the one DTE uh, iron fly, and we put it in, you know, 15 minutes or so before the market closes, yeah. we like you said, this week, I think at least three times it's uh, opened up, you know, pretty, pretty far away from the center, not, not terribly, yeah. you know, to some degree, but it came back, but it's, yeah. it's a matter of like, in, at least in my mind of cutting my, my losses quickly and riding yeah. the, you know, the winners. Um, I'm wondering though, you know, we were we were kind of gabbing back and forth with with Carl yesterday on how he yeah. will add some credit spreads uh, possibly to the the losing side. And I was just going to ask you if if you're doing some back testing or whatever. What if it did move? We wake up, you know, the markets open up at 
Um, would it would it make sense possibly to put on another one, another iron fly with the center right there at the yeah. open? It, it, it definitely could work. Yeah. I don't know how to back test that, to be honest. That'd be really hard to put in certain parameters. But it makes sense logically because it might stay at that area of mean revert more likely than continue to drop in most cases, probably. Yeah. I mean, I mean this week it always came back, so you, you, it might not yeah. have been the best choice. On the other hand, you're 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 not you're making money the entire time. You know, you're you're making it as it moves back to the the the, the, the you know the night before price, and you're still probably making money on that initial one with time right. decay. Hopefully it moves. But, right. Uh, anyway. However, you might be over allocating positions, and then those black swan days where it just keeps dropping, it yeah. could really hurt possibly. Yeah. So it's it's hard to judge on that. When I added to the ebook strategy, I said, leave at least three times your money in your account for the amount of trades you want to do. So if you're doing a trade that has a max loss of $1,000, leave 3000 and only trade 1000 of it. Because, yeah, they're pretty dramatic losses, possibly. Yeah. Like, I, I think some members, they might see this like, ooh, I only need $1,000 and that's it. But what if you have two losses in a row at like $200 each? You can't do them anymore, right? Yeah. Or you're taking your money from another place. But like, if you do, yeah, if you do it with three times the amount of money, you could still get decent, like overall returns on it. You know, if you make $100 on a $3,000 account, that's still not too bad. Mm -hmm. And that's only with one contract. But if you can get $100 on one contract and a thousand, that's all you have with you, that's a very dramatic move. And again, you could get a few losses in a row relatively easily on these, especially if you don't have like the, like, I guess, fortitude to stay in the trade longer. I mean, this week, one of the trades I got out at the loss, then almost the exact same thing happened again. And I decided to wait it out a little bit and the market happened to turn and it was a profit. You never know what's going to happen with the market, right? <laughs> and, and in what time frame? Yeah, yeah in what time frame. That's why these one DTEs are pretty dramatic moves. Now you got to keep your losses uh, small. You know, nice. if it moves in your direction, you can sit and wait on that all day long, move your stop losses. But if it's moving against you, yeah, it could be painful. And I also added on the strategy guide: if you hit seventy-five percent of your expected move, so the expected move is say thirty. If you go say twenty-two or so, I will just get out. It's yeah. probably not worth waiting it out at that point. Especially if it happens like right away, like overnight futures are right at most open. Well, Lance, thank you. I've got to run. I appreciate it. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Dan. Matt, Dave, any other quick questions? We've got about three minutes. No. Um, I, I think the longer dated might be, like you said, might be the way to go just because. You know, we woke up this morning, futures were down 30 points. Yeah. And I mean, in March, it was just, it could be a hundred point range. Right. So you could tell. it just sometimes a bit concerning doing those shorter DTEs. Yeah. That's why I'm loving these. Uh, 90 day till expiration iron right. condors. And especially if you enter them with a high VIX, those are so yeah. good. Um, yeah. A book I would definitely recommend you look into is Profiting from Iron Condors, Michael Ben Khalifa. It's probably the best book I've read on that situation. It's a little hard to find, but. Yeah, it doesn't even, you have to type his name. There, here we go. Really good book about it. He pretty much shows like the main way that you could go. And then he breaks down all the different issues with doing it with individual stocks or doing it with um, certain time frames. And then he goes into why do we need to take in a certain amount of premium? It's really well like planned out. So I definitely recommend looking at that. Um, the main, I'll probably be a little off, but from what he says is 
when the VIX is elevated, quote, that means higher than it was recently. It's a little subjective. Sell a 25 with iron condor at the 0, 025, 50, or 75 number because there's more volume there. This makes sense. So you wouldn't want to sell a 39.85, go to 39.75. And he would even wait until the deltas, I think he recommends around 0.1 to 0.12 delta or so. And he'll sell a 25 width of it. 90 days out and he has target profits he gets out. It's really interesting. All right. Well, the VIX is just such yeah. a main reverting instrument. Right. It is. All right. We got uh, no more time left. So been, appreciate you guys joining in. And I'll leave a recording of it if you want to rewatch. All right. Have a good night, guys.